I met Chris Packham, who has Asperger's and who I'd known on the telly when I was a young boy watching The Really Wild Show. And I met him and was incredibly surprised at how different he was in real life to how he appears doing his wildlife programs, doing Spring Watch and Autumn Watch, and just how much he was, he had learnt to and was controlling his autism and his Asperger's. And so when I met him, I thought he was the most fascinating man I'd ever met. And I thought there's a real, really interesting film here that we can make that is about someone who's actually got uh, autism talking about what it's like, rather than, which most documentaries are, people talking about autism on behalf of the people who have it. So we essentially wanted to give him a voice to describe the reality of it, rather than um, having experts talk about it. So after I met Chris, um, I read his book. He'd written a book that was sort of about his condition, but also about his childhood. And it was incredibly dense and magical, and um, again, quite an extraordinary uh, perspective on the world. And immediately I knew that I wanted to recreate some of those moments from his childhood. That lots of this story was a past tense story about how he'd grown up with autism, how he'd um, how his Asperger's had affected him and how he had sort of learnt to deal with that over his life and what he was still doing now. So what was what started out as a as a straight documentary for the BBC, Chris telling his, talking about himself and meeting other people with Asperger's. Once I got involved, I was very clear that we needed to tell that backstory, that, that we wanted to show that Chris wasn't the Chris that you knew on the telly. He was a very different person and very special and wonderful. And that I wanted to sort of tell the origin story of how, how did Chris become Chris. I was definitely aware that it was a difficult film for Chris to make particularly, and that revealing these sides to himself and talking about it in certain ways that he had spent years masking was very difficult. And I sort of, and, and also equally, for a man with autism, we were often doing the worst possible thing. We were throwing him into situations he didn't know anything about with new people, new environments, noisy, busy. And Chris has a thing where that's a, a massive sort of emotional and um, oral visual overload. So he is freaking out on occasion on some shoot days. And uh, I suppose all I did was try to be really empathetic to that and try and um, kind of work together really closely. Having made this film with Chris, I feel very close to him and that I feel like I have sort of been very privileged to get inside his head and that together we've been able to do something that speaks to a lot of other people uh, around the country. Um, we've had extraordinary feedback from lots of autistic children saying I feel like having you articulate this has given me the confidence to do um, whatever and but, and that's that's really lovely. Um, I always think that being a documentary director means you have to do everything and nothing and I think there's a massive confidence trick in being a director because half the time you've just got to wait and everyone's looking at you to provide the answers and you don't have them. And that's quite, it's important to know that because sometimes you're just dependent on something happening and sometimes it doesn't happen for some time. But mainly, I think you need to be good with people. I think you need to be interested in people and I think you need to want to tell stories. It's not enough just to go out and film everything that happens. You've got to think about how you're going to structure that, how you're going to turn it into a story and how you're going to take someone's real story do it justice but compress it and make it mean something bigger for a bigger audience. My preparation is watching as much other stuff out there that's been made on a similar subject because I don't want to make something that's been done before. Um, reading as whatever I can get my hands on and thinking and then going and spending time with my co contributor and we, we took a camera down to, to Chris's house and to go and sort of see how it would feel. And all I really did to Chris was say, just be yourself, don't be the person we see on telly. And he sort of looked at me and went, oh, that's gonna be quite difficult because it's, it's quite a, a, a persona I've built up. And, but he went, all right, I can do this. Um, and prior to that, when I first met him, I said, is there anything that's off limits? You know, he's a public figure quite often in this situation. He might be saying, I don't wanna talk about this, I don't wanna talk about that. You know, I'm nervous about this. Um, 
And he said, I want to be entirely truthful. You, there's nothing I won't talk about. And that, for a, for a documentary filmmaker, is, is extraordinary. Um, it's actually, you know, even if people say that, it's very rare that you don't get people telling you a mediated version of themselves, which might not necessarily be a sort of bigger objective truth. Anyway, so we went down and spent some time with Chris, got a camera out, said, be yourself. And the, the first thing we filmed, I think on that first day, was the beginning of the documentary. It's Chris in his house showing us around immediately. And then, and then he goes off into the woods and, and, and sort of introduces us to his life. And it was in many ways that simple. And I just filmed it. The truth is I'm quite selfish as a director. I don't really have an audience in mind when I'm making something. I am asking questions that I know people want to ask, and that's a very basic technique, is just to ask the stupid questions and slow it all down and kind of let it unravel. But really I make films for myself, and that is the selfish answer. I, I find subject matter I'm interested in, and I, I go off and do my version of it and sort of enjoy living in, for example, Chris's world. And actually, often I find myself only in the edit going, oh, right, this is, um, there's, some, there's something here that's quite good, that is quite universal, that will appeal to other people. Um, so I just, I just try and get on and make the film and then worry about what people are going to think later. So I think with all projects, you have to give quite a lot of yourself as a director because what you're asking people to do is put themselves on the line, go further than they have ever before, be more honest, be more truthful, talk about the stuff that might be difficult to articulate. And the only way to do that is for them to look you in the eyes as, a, as the director and that they know that you've got their back, that you are there for the right reasons and that you're going to make a film that they are proud of. And there's no, it's, it's a leap of faith. There's no other way of doing it. And sometimes with some contributors that's very difficult um, and it takes much longer for them to trust you and to do that. But generally you get there, I think, just by being yourself and talking about yourself and kind of connecting with that person, not just letting it be a job and sort of turning off at the end of the day. So when I said before that being a director is about uh, doing everything, but also in a way doing nothing, part of that is that your team is absolutely essential and part of your major role is just to pick the right people to work with. And I like to work with a very small team. Um, I think it, it, it makes everyone feel less like you're making television or you're making a film and more like you are um, going through an experience. So in this documentary, we traveled across the States with Chris and that was just me, Chris, and our producer. Uh, Lizzie Kempton, who's fantastic, um, and so as a result, we were filming Chris actually doing, you know, Chris actually driving places, Chris actually walking through the door, rather than being a massive team who rolls up and then gets ready and tell, you know, marks a slate and says action. We try. I'm trying to make it feel as real as possible. I'm trying to use the smallest camera I can. I'm trying to immerse ourselves in the in the experience. Um, and so, someone like Lizzie is instrumental throughout. She liaises with all the other contributors. She does a great amount of research. She finds who we're looking to meet and is constantly talking back to me about how that might inform the story, what we might be able to tell, what is possible, what might be interesting to Chris and to an audience, um, and really maintaining those relationships. But then also also working out all the boring logistics of how we get around and what we do. Um, and then that, that is then really well supported by a terrific exec in Tom Barry, who essentially, I think he would say his job is to hold the line and give me the confidence to say, no, this is going to be great, and yes, that's right, and be a sounding board so that when I'm worried, when I don't know what I'm doing, I can say to him, is this going to work? Uh, and we had that, and we had that up right up to the BBC with Craig Hunter and Abigail Priddle and Tom McDonald, and all of them just backed us the whole time and said, go for it, go for it, this is going to be great, don't worry about that stuff. And that's a really difficult thing because often uh, commissioners and channels, uh, our financiers are worried. Their, their central point of view is is to worry, and that if, if it goes wrong, if you don't give them the confidence, then that will infect you, you'll start to worry, and you'll end up, everyone ends up making something that feels quite compromised, I think. At the other end, uh, my DOP, Patrick Smith, is someone I work with all the time. Um, he, me and him have worked together for years. We don't work that often. We work two or three times a year because I self-shoot. Uh, but there are special days when I, want, when, when I want Pat to bring something that I can't bring. And in this, he shot uh, drama recreation scenes for me, um, which uh, I just think he brings a sort of magnificent lyricism to those images and a real beauty. Um, and he's also just the nicest man and the fastest DOP you'll find. 
Um, and then there's Will Greyburn, my editor, who's, who's possibly my closest uh, collaborator in terms of building a story, in terms of wrangling what it is we're trying to say. Um, he really thinks a lot about how this will play, how people will react to it. Um, so I like to work as much as possible with editors that I've already worked with. Um, again, it's about having a shorthand. It's about and them knowing what I like. What what you know. In we go off and shoot, uh, you know, fifty hours of rushes, sometimes more, um, and they've got to be able to get that through that, knowing what I like and what will land and what what sort of film we want to make. Um, and so I get my editor involved very early on. In this case. Uh, Will Grayburn. I started showing him early rushes. We started talking about music. Um, we were juggling how we're going to structure various different elements. Chris's backstory, his past tense, um, a present day narrative road trip across America, and then Chris's sort of day to day life now, his relationships. So there's quite a lot that we were juggling. Um, and me and him just go back and forth. Uh, essentially, we spend a lot of time arguing, quite like a good argument in an edit. I think that's quite useful. Um, I, essentially, I want real passion. I want him to, to, to feel like it's his film and I want him to argue back at me. And that's the same for any editor I'd, I'd work with. So I've been directing for about 10 years now. And it's only in the last few years that I've actually felt like I've uh, found my own confidence as a director. I think, com I think directing is a confidence game. I think it's a trick where we're all pretending we know what we're doing. And I feel like now comfortable enough that, it, that, I, that, that I can pursue a vision from start to end and, and, and it will work. And doing that, I, f I find, is quite difficult. I think that's the, the biggest thing. I suppose I've learned that if you have an idea of what to do with something and if you can engage everyone else with that then it is possible to sort of see it through to the end and, and produce something that you're really proud of.